Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, I do want to speak about Nico Williams, a player that we have talked about so many times in this YouTube channel. I have recommended the idea for Barcelona to go for Nico Williams because Barcelona do need to be stronger next season. And one of the ways Barcelona can be stronger next season is by signing a world-class left winger. And not just that, but a left winger that knows the majority of the Barcelona players. And only one player comes to mind, and that is again, Nico Williams. And earlier today, Day, it has been reported according to 21 Marty, a source that is very close to Barcelona has explained this. Barcelona has not forgotten about Nico Williams. He remains high on the agenda in case Barcelona are able to make a move in the summer window. He is popular due to his profile and because he plays on the left wing. Nico Williams has a release clause of 50 million euros, which is attainable, but Barcelona need to return to the 1-1 transfer rule first. Nico Williams would be excited to join Barcelona. Barcelona, and he also has several good friends at Barcelona, but he would never force a way out of Athletic Club. And so look, like I have said, it is exciting to hear that Nico Williams would love to join Barcelona. Ever since we saw Nico Williams share those photos on Instagram, with him being with La Mini Mal or Alejandro Balde, you can just get that sense. And I believe that the people within Barcelona feel the exact same way, that they like this whole idea that Nico Williams is very close to Balde and La Mini Mal, because when we talk about those three players, those three players all have great 1v1 capabilities and they do have great chemistry. So can you imagine Alejandro Balde and Nico Williams running riot on the left flank or imagine La Minimal making a cross to the center with Nico Williams meeting up with that cross? Great football can be made, especially between La Minimal and Nico Williams. And also, I would also like to say that this feeling of Nico Williams being meant to join Barcelona is growing because it's very much similar to Fabregas in 2010. Fabregas was playing for Arsenal. But around that year of 2009, 2010, we all knew that Fabregas was going to eventually join Barcelona. It was just meant to be because of how well he was connected with the Barcelona players at that time. His playing style were like, oh my God, Fabregas would be a great inclusion to Pep Guardiola's Barcelona team with Xavi, Iniesta, Sergio Busquets. We knew a deal was eventually going to happen because he was seen as a Barcelona player. And so the same thing can be said with Nico Williams. There are so many similarities. Now, here's the problem. Can Joel Laporta afford such a deal? Because look, let's justify the 50 million euros. Buying a left winger would definitely complete the squad. Yes, we have Joao Felix. He is scoring goals, providing assists. Barcelona even want to ask for a second loan. But I believe that Deco and Xavi are looking for a 1v1 killer. Joao Felix is not a one versus one killer. He is some sort of like a second striker, somebody who needs to have another player next to him to combine and make a one, two to get through the defense, right? Felix is either a supporter or he needs a supporter. Nico Williams is more by himself. He likes being by himself. He likes the 1v1s. He likes the 1v2s because he is really good at it. He gives his teams numerical advantages on the pitch, meaning that he can turn a three versus three to a three versus two by eliminating one defender. Like go look at that game between Brazil and Spain. Besides La Minimal, one of the players that played amazing was also Nico Williams. We'll talk about that match later down this video. But like I've said, how can we pull this off? Because it is justified. Like, how can you not say yes to only paying 50 million euros for a player that might become one of the best in his position? And so look, Nico Williams signed a new contract back on December 2023. I thought the club placed a clause in his contract where his release clause was going to be 50 million euros. It cannot go higher. It cannot go lower. That is the set one. No matter how great he becomes at Athletic Club, it will remain to be 50 million euros. Part of the reason why Bilbao did this and renewed him at such a low rate is because they did not want to risk losing him for free in June 2024 because his contract with Athletic Club was going to be ending at the end of this season and Bilbao did not want to do that. And so to see that Nico cost half of what Liao or Cavara is, it is such a deal. Now you may question, but Kevin, maybe the reason why Nico Williams costs half of what Liao is, is because maybe Nico Williams is sportingly half of what Liao is. Maybe Liao is just much better. But then if you compare Liao and Nico Williams, you can see that Nico Williams almost dominates Liao in every aspect of the attacking game. Maybe yes, in key passes, Liao is slightly better. But in terms of offensive actions, carries, dribbles, even assists, Nico Williams is just as, if not better, than Liao in those areas. Also, Nico Williams is La Liga proven. He has played multiple La Liga matches. And so if he does join Barcelona, he'll say, oh yeah, I have played against Alaves before. I have played against Real Madrid before. I have played 
played against Atletico Madrid before. He has the experience and that's very important. Nico Williams also plays in a basket team, so he can be considered as like a basket player. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but there is a thing in Spain called a basket country where within that country, there are different teams, which is Alaves, Athletic Club, and Real Sociedad. And in general, those players that play and represent basket teams, which is again Alaves, Real Sociedad, and Athletic Club, they tend to be very loyal to their club. This is the reason why Zubimendi speaks in the way that he speaks to the media and how he says, I want to stay here at Real Sociedad. And I understand that because there's a lot of loyalty within these regions. But historically, it has always been seen that every time a basket club sends one of their players to Barcelona, they tend to be very successful, which makes Nico Williams transfer even more exciting. Like for example, Baquero, Zubi Zareta, Salinas, Alexanco, Tiki, Bergustein. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but he was also the sporting director of Barcelona and now the sporting director of Man City with Pep Guardiola. But all of these names slash players came from basket clubs and they moved to Barcelona. Nico Williams can fall onto this list and hopefully Zubimendi, also another player that comes from a basket club, can come to Barcelona. It's very interesting in the way all of this does work. And so in the end, Barcelona's style really does add emphasis on pure wingers. Nico Williams is a pure winger. The fact that he has the same nationality and age range with most of the Barcelona players makes it even more interesting. The 50 million euros is so justified it's not even funny. And so we are going to be getting very mathematical here. This may bore you guys, but I'm going to try my best to like broadly explain what Joan Laporta needs to do. So back on February 28th, Barcelona reportedly do have a deficit of 30 million euros. Remember how I did say in the beginning of the video, Barcelona, if they want to sign someone like Nico Williams, need to head towards and comply with the 1-1 one, one transfer rule that La Liga does place, which basically means that you need to head towards a position financially where you're able to sell one player to gain another. Barcelona are not like that right now. Barcelona are in a financial situation where they need to sell like two or three players to gain one player. In order for Barcelona to go on the 1-1 one, one transfer rule, they need to cover up the 30 million euro deficit. And so one of the ways that has been explained on how Barcelona can achieve more income before the end of the season is by going far in the Champions League. Now remember, this was reported on February 28th before Barcelona got into the quarterfinals. And so as you can see here, this is going to be the prize money that teams gain once they do head towards that stage. Barcelona, now that they are in the quarterfinals, they have already gained 10.6 million euros. If Barcelona can go past PSG, they will get 12.5 million euros on top of that, meaning that if we are successful and Xavi Hernandez and the players do what they need to do, they can gain 23 million euros that will cover up like 90% already of the 30 million euro deficit. So like obviously if Barcelona go into the last two and they end up being like runners up or they're the winner, Barcelona will be very financially successful in this Champions League run. But we're not going to be having that conversation yet. We just don't know what could happen. I do think that there is a possibility that Barcelona could go past the quarterfinals and go into the semifinal position and gain this prize money. So let's just play it safe and just assume that they head towards the semifinal and semifinal only, right? So just to play it safe because we don't want to overpromise anything or overhype anything. We do need to do the work first. Moving on towards the next source of income that can cover our losses. I don't know if you guys know, but in the beginning of this year, it was also reported that Barcelona are entering into a lawsuit that is going to go against the investment firm Libero because earlier in the season, like six to seven months ago, Libero was supposed to pay Joan Laporta and Barcelona 40 million euros for the sale of Barca Vision. After multiple delays from Libero, the deadline payment has basically passed and no funds have ever been received and Barcelona were expecting for the 40 million euros to be received like four to five months ago, but it never happened. And so in the end, whether Libero pays the 40 million euros or the lawsuit goes completely through, they will get the money that they originally agreed for. So there is income that Joan Laporta can make. It's just that there is delays. There is also the waiting game on whether Barcelona can go far into the Champions League. So let's assume that we get the 40 million euros from Libero. And let's also assume that we get the prize money of the Champions League, which is going to be a total of 23 million euros. Okay, because again, I'm just assuming that they just don't go past the semifinals. They stay in the semifinals and they compete well. So 
in total, Barcelona gained 63 million euros. Remember how I said there is a 30 million euro deficit to get to the 1-1 transfer rule. And so in total, Laporta would be netting 33 million euros net profit. Nico Williams still cost 50 million euros. So there's 17 million euros that Barcelona will still need to make. And this is why I do say and why I propose that Barcelona need to sell players in the summer, which will be another source of income. If you sell Eric Garcia, Ansu Fati, Sergio Roberto, Marcos Alonso, Oriol Romeo, Lenglet, Dest, you get a gain of 70 million euros in transfer fees with 35 million euros cut off of the wage bill. So imagine that, right? You get 70 million euros from selling seven players, and then you get the 33 million euros from the net profit that you gained from the lawsuit from Libero and the prize money, you get a total of 103 million euros in income. And that, my friends, is a win because now that you have 103 million euros in income, Nico Williams only costs 50 million euros. So we can pay for that and still have another 45 to 50 million euros to spend on either wages or on players. It could be a new central defensive midfielder, just like we talked about before. And this is the reason why Barcelona are pressing hard for someone like Ornana. And they don't want to pay the 60 million euros because they believe that that is going to be really pushing it based off the financial gains they are going to be making in the summer. They want to go for the 20 million to 30 million euros price tag for Onana. So I hope a lot of this does make sense. It's quite clear that the roadmap is there. It's just a matter of can we achieve in terms of performances and can we get the money that we are supposed to be earning? It is quite clear that Nico Williams will be worth it. He is a great player. It's going to be a very difficult task to execute this operation. But you know, like we saw in this game between Brazil and Spain, which ended 3-3, La Minha Mal was probably the best player on that night. But one of the other best players was Nico Williams. If you look at the list here, you can see that in terms of duels, La Minha Mal was number one. He won the most duels. You know who was in second place? It was not Hendrik. It was not Vinicius. It was not Wendell. It was not Paqueta. It was Nico Williams with a total of eight. So can you imagine having Nico Williams and La Minha Mal on the wings? Barcelona would be very dangerous. And it's crazy to see that Nico Williams has more duels won than someone like Vinicius because you would assume that Vinicius is simply just much better because if you look at the stats based on Y Scout, Nico Williams is in second place when it comes to 1v1 duels. Vinicius is in first. And I believe the reason why Nico Williams falls short from Vinicius in La Liga is because of obviously Vinicius has better backing at Real Madrid compared to a team like Athletic Club. So if you give someone like Nico Williams a backing of Barcelona players that has Pedri, Gavi, Frankie, Gundogan, can you imagine what Nico Williams could become and how much he can overcome someone like Vini? So the projection is extraordinary. I hope that Barcelona do get it done. Let's see what happens. And that is how I'm going to be wrapping up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.